Hey everyone, happy Friday out there in YouTube land. Hope you guys are having a really fantastic week. So excited that you're hanging out with us here on your Friday afternoon, morning, or evening, depending on where you're watching from. We have a really special, jam-packed, hopefully crazy fun show for you guys today. A special performance from some of our favorite experts out there in the live streaming world. So really hoping that you guys will um, engage with us, play with us, laugh with us, share your questions if you have any questions about how to use live video and Ecamm and any of the other apps that you may be using to broadcast and create really engaging and fantastic presentations. Throw a cue in front of your question so that we make sure that we don't miss it. We will circle back for questions at the end of our discussion, but if any of them jump out at us, we'll probably pull them in as we chat. But really excited to have everyone here today. And without further ado, I'm Katie Fox, and I work here at Ecamm. Um, I am the marketing manager, so you may have seen me here on past uh, live stream broadcasts and popping up in the community and all the different spots where we go live. Um, and I'm really excited to have a full panel today. So we have with us the marvelous Stephanie Liu from Lights Camera Live and our Leap Into Live Streaming Booth Camp, which ran earlier this spring. We have the marvelous Gary Ware, and we have the spectacular Brian Fanzo. Thank you so much for letting me trick you guys into hanging out with me here on Friday. Always excited to chat with you guys. Um, before we jump too much into it, I'd love for you guys each to give just a really brief background for anyone out there that may not know exactly who you are a little bit uh, about you. How about Stephanie, we start with you. Of course, yeah. Hey everyone, I'm Stephanie Liu, and I'm a live video strategist. I help companies and entrepreneurs go from unknown to unforgettable using live video. From moonwalkers to master chefs, that is my beat. I'm also a mom of a very, very hyperactive five-year-old who you will hear <laughs> clanking around in the background. It's Friday. Right? Sorry, I didn't get to uh, <laughs> I feel your pain. <laughs> yeah, I'm also, I feel like I'm one of like the OG Ecamm live folks. Yeah. So everything from just seeing the evolution of it, it's been absolutely amazing. And just knowing how I can use Ecamm in other platforms to just really just make a big splash and wow people is really exciting. So thank you for having me here today. Yeah, yeah, really excited to dive in. Uh, okay, over to you, Gary. Yo, 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 uh, Gary Ware, uh, run Breakthrough Play. Uh, it's my mission to help busy adults uh, use the power of play to be more creative, more collaborative, more confident. And um, yeah, uh, I've known Stephanie for a hot minute uh, before <laughs> before she was LCL. Uh, so yeah, we, we go we go way back. But uh, yeah, uh, I've been I've been. All right. Thank you, COVID. Hashtag thank you, COVID. Uh, if it wasn't for that, I don't know if there's very many things that we can say, wow, I appreciate COVID for this, but um, yeah, this it might, wasn't in my... This might be one of the few. <laughs> yeah, one of the few. Yeah. Uh, but if it wasn't for COVID, uh, I wouldn't have upgraded my, uh, my in-home <laughs> studio because I was focusing more on being out of the house. So, And I also have a kid. He's three. <laughs> kids so we can all we can all appreciate each other's pain seriously if kids run in we're just gonna roll with it because it's live video <laughs> over to you brian yeah no i got yeah, proud girl dad of of three uh but mine aren't here right now so i, I lucked out on, on that side of, of the house uh have a house to myself in the studio uh digital futurist uh, unemployed keynote speaker, uh, now a virtual keynote speaker, uh, since the uh, since COVID uh, threw a massive fork in that. Um, the epiphany for me, uh, and uh, you know, I pivoted into entrepreneurship, and on February 27th of 2014. This app called Meerkat came out and I uh, pressed the damn button for the first time and had my like first aha moment. And uh, since then, I've done 3,500 live streams, uh, helped launch live streams for IBM, Dell, Samsung, SAP, the UFC, Applebee's, um, as well as kind of using it for myself now, of course, as a virtual speaker. So uh, I have a home studio, five cameras set up. Uh, I've done, I did my 51st virtual presentation this morning since COVID started. So I don't know, Gary, it's thanks COVID because I, I've loved virtual and live streaming. I like it to build my offline travel life. Um, but I, I have with you on the idea that it, um, it really had me investing in uh, taking virtual presentation 
uh, abilities to a new level. And so it's been fun. I coach some executives. I'm coaching uh, different events. I hosted a, an eight hour Denmark event uh, two days ago that started at 4 a.m. my time. Wow. That was a long day. Wow. My longest break was two minutes when they had a DJ every hour um, between the segues. So that was a learning experience. But uh, yeah, I, I did do presentations, host, do a little bit of all that stuff. And my mantra is press the damn button. I, and I, I feel like you, <laughs> I think, I think uh, certainly Stephanie and Brian, you guys were there right at the beginning when I started and were kind of the people that I, I learned from going in and push, press the damn button is my, my mantra and the middle of my fear of going live here and there, but yes, trial by fire. I'm, uh, I'm super, always excited to learn from, from the members in our community and I'm thrilled to have you three here today. So I know that we've been having tons of questions everyone out there you know throughout this entire pandemic has been really trying to think through you know how can i take my business online how can i continue to be able to give you know really engaging personable um you know presentations if i can't be there in person so you know i, I particularly you guys who are often giving uh presentations and talking through pro tips and being able to speak in front of people i'm really excited to it on how you made the switch into the world of virtual presentations. Stephanie, I know that you, as a live streamer, I've, I've for the most part always been kind of in the world of virtual presentations, but I know you do a lot of um, actual talks as well up on stages. So as, as you're thinking through um, planning out and getting out ahead of presentations, is it a different mindset thinking through how you can take what would have been a really fantastic stage presentation and pulling it into the virtual space? How do you go about planning that or thinking that through? Absolutely. This is the fun part. I feel like this is this is where you become the producer of your own show, right? And Ecamm gives you that ability. There are things when you are doing a digital keynote presentation and there's a story that you want to tell. And usually with that story, how are you going to translate that visually? And most people, when they're on stage, they'll have you know, a PowerPoint presentation. For those of us, you know, Fanzo and, and Gary will do things where we'll have gifts in there or we'll even have videos into that. And so being able to create a scene where you could just have a movie playing as you tell your story, as you go back in time to talk about the frustrations and wanting to give up and all of that other stuff, you can do that in Ecamm to make your story become more vivid. And it's one of those things where most people don't really expect that. They're just expecting a PowerPoint presentation, right? Like that's like the bar. And when you come in with your own trailer, with your own videos, with your own sound effects, like these are all things like I tend to map out during a talk. It's like, okay, and then this is what's going to happen. We're going to drop this. And then, you know, we're going to transition over into this. And it makes it into like a movie. And then at that point, they're like, I've never seen this before. What are you using? And you're like, oh, here's the Ecamm link. Here you go. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I think that, that we've been talking more and more in, um, in the last, I would say, probably 10 or 15 different shows that we've done in the last few months about really being able to leverage scenes within Ecamm Live and set up and plan out your run of show. And I think that's a really good point that, uh, you know, sometimes when you're thinking through creating a presentation and maybe you're thinking, you know, okay, we're going to be in Zoom or we're going to be in Google Meet or in this different software, you're not necessarily thinking through that run of show and the, the order of when you're going to display and present things, but you absolutely could be. You could still leverage all of those different scenes and plan it out and trigger all of those things and then use virtual camera and send that out through to Zoom or to Meet or to, um, you know, virtually most most other applications out there. Um, yeah, and I think it's I think it's really really smart. Um, I know Brian has been you've been doing a bunch of stuff with another app called Prezi, right? And and that's yep. helped to get uh, aff um, assets and overlays up. Talk us through a little bit about how you found Prezi and what some of the the benefits are of using that in your presentations. Yeah, let's see if I. I didn't have it up, but uh, let's do it on the fly because that's what we're all about, right? Um, <laughs> it's like, ooh, show and tell. Like, we're all uh, like, ooh, yeah, we're yeah. showing you. That's one of the moments where you get to really geek out with your peers, right? Because it's yep. you're like, well, how are you doing yours? And how are you doing? And like, I steal a couple of things from Gary. We collaborate on a couple of things. I see Brian Prezi stuff, and I'm like, that's on a whole nother level. <laughs> yeah. 
I, I here, let me uh, here. I'll restart that real quick. But um, so yeah, for me, I think you know, I th one of the things I think Stephanie touched on that too. You know, webinars, virtual and live streaming, um, will never replace what we do offline, right? I think that's something like an important um, aspect of what we do. But if you're willing to reinvent or use these tools. Uh, in ways that are virtual first thinking, we can not only supplement, but we can create experiences that would have never been able to be delivered um, in an offline experience. And so for me, uh, I've been doing things like choose your own adventure, where I put up uh, three different uh, graphics on the screen using Ecamm, uh, and I let the audience vote on which story from the three pictures do they want me to close my presentation with. Uh, so they're able to vote ABC, and then I use that as my last story. I'd never be able to do that offline, right? I, I do 60 to 70 events offline a year, um, and if anyone's tried a live poll or Q&A with an audience during your chat, it's like a nightmare. Um, virtually, it's easy, right? So I've done, uh, since March 30th, uh, I've done 51 virtual presentations, and uh, 49 of the 51 I've used Ecamm. Um, on the back end. So um, that to me, you know, I use Prezi Video, which I'll show in a second, um, to do overlays. Uh, I've also used the broadcasting capabilities of, uh, of Ecamm as well, right? So to me, there, it, there's an element of creating a TV-like experience and then also telling a story with your presentation. Uh, I'm not a big fan of taking offline limitations or offline mechanics and trying to make them work online. I, I say throw, leave the offline mechanics uh, offline and try to um, reinvent them online. So let's see, let's do, let's, let me show you what I mean real quick on a, let me throw my, my Prezi camera up there. And there we go. Woo. So now we, are, we have, so I have these, so you notice I have no green screen um, and this is just one of my, um, my presentation decks, but I'm able to do overlays uh, directly on screen using Prezi Videos. Prezi Video is an app I have installed on my laptop, and I'm using their virtual cam to send to the Ecamm virtual cam, um, which is what I use to Zoom, to WebEx, to all of those things. And I'm able to use my, my stream deck or any of those tools, and I design every one of these pieces. So um, like, like, there you go. Like this, this is a good one. Um, you know, it also depends on the background. So, um, I just moved my office. So I had a white background. So a lot of these, um, things look really good on white. They don't look so good on the, on the black background, but yeah. So the, to me, this is all, you know, comes down to this idea of, um, you know, creating a virtual experience that you can't get anywhere else, right? How do you, how do you design something, um, that is truly virtual first focused, uh, and it's what I'm doing with my brand and my presentations. And it's why I, my, my soapbox is we shouldn't make everything interactive, but all virtual presentations should be participatory, uh, which means you should allow the audience to participate and you should be able to you know, kind of bring them on that journey, which I know both Gary and Stephanie are doing as well. Yeah, definitely. Oh, good. Stephanie's back. We, <laughs> we lost you for a second, Stephanie. We're playing around for a time. Resuscitate. Because, uh, <laughs> panic mode. We're playing around. I saw a couple of people asking in the questions where the Skype logo is. The Skype logo is not in this presentation because we are using our new interview feature, which is still in a closed private beta. We're testing with a few of our experts and influencers. And as soon as we get to a really good space, we'll be really excited to be rolling it out to everyone. But it's looking pretty good so far. So that's the that's the answer. To yeah, that was my fault. I, I was I was like I was messing around with my camera. <laughs> That's what happens, I feel like, when you have us. Because, right. and Katie knows this, like Ken and Glenn, they all know this, is that we come in and we break stuff because yeah. we want to see how much we want to, like, push it. And so I was like, I wonder if I could do this. And I was like, oh, I broke it. It's okay. She'll bring me back. <laughs> Good. And I, I think that's a really great lesson for everyone watching to, to pick up on that I think, you know, and I mean, obviously, there's a time and a place for it. You don't want to be pushing buttons and breaking things when you have a huge presentation and there, and there are, you know, thousands of people tuning in or spending money to be able to see you. Absolutely not. But it is great to have a community of people that you can work with and whether that's a closed Facebook group or um, a safe space where you can go and play with things and push the buttons and try different things because that's, that's how everyone figures out exactly what you know what the end product is going to be what's going to work and not work for you um, and Brian I had someone had asked earlier 
Um, oh, it looks like Environmental Coffee House beat me to it. <laughs> How to spell Prezi, P-R-E-Z -E if you're Canadian, I. <laughs> um, yep. It's a great. Yeah, are, it's, this, it's the same software from like the snake presenting one. Like I tried it in 2014, thought it was cool, did it twice. And that was like way too much work, Prezi, to do that. Uh, but their Prezi video tool, I mean, it just overlays virtual cam. Uh, and I can tell you from a creation perspective, they have templates, video templates, which are really nice. Um, yeah. And then you can take their advanced themes and then edit them. So like, I mean, that's what I've been doing on, on that side. And I think that's, you know, kind of the beauty with, you know, uh, Ecamm for me has been, what can I plug in to make that whole experience kind of creative and unique? Um, and, you know, and also include, you know, I have five cameras set up here in the home office, awesome. um, which is a little crazy, no. uh, all plugged into my laptop, my laptop. <laughs> I, I'm very, very thankful. Oh, I also spilled a drink onto it, making a TikTok video the other day, um, and it still survives. So I, I owe a lot to that. So, but uh, yeah, that's the, that's kind of the beauty of this virtual side, right? It's getting creative, breaking things. I mean, I have five video cameras, but very seldom do I use more than two in my presentations, but when I'm hanging out with creative friends. It's like, Ooh, try this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the, that's where it's it dangerous. That's when it's like, yeah. I mean, even Gary was like, so guess what I bought? And I was like, Ooh, tell me, <laughs> show me your gear, show me your studio. It's, it's a thing. Yeah. See, look at yes. you. <laughs> I feel like Gary's plotting something down there. He's been looking down. He's like getting ready. I know. I hear the shuffling of papers. I'm, like, I'm, like, okay. I'm, I'm just ready for fun. Fun to erupt. Gary's, Gary's making something over there. Yeah, absolutely. And I, actually, it's like that's a good a good question to force Gary into. How are you thinking through? Oh, we got an echo going. How are you thinking through planning for your presentations and making sure that you're you're focused on the content? as well as any of the cool, you know, things and elements that you can bring into it. How do you balance out those two sides? I know from an improv background, you're obviously pretty quick on your feet and being able to really think through how the content can can create that presence. How do you think through how to balance those things out? And, and, and when you answer that que question, <laughs> answer it as if you were making a sandwich. What would be the ingredients <laughs> in this sandwich that you're creating since you're an amazing improviser? Bring, bring. Wow, put it be would it be on the spot? Is Stephanie's making me like this? It's like, all right, so you got a sandwich, and we have this. Like, uh, so what I'm, what I am thinking about my experiences, and Brian hit the nail on the head when he said, you have to reinvent yeah. because you can't just like, oh, this is how it was when I was in person. They're gonna love it because this content's amazing. F no, no, it's not like that. And so- No, they will not. If No, they won't and, and they will fall asleep. But the cool thing is everyone's already doing that. So for the intelligent people watching, you just add one element, yeah. it's gonna be like, yeah, you're freaking amazing. And so, all right, I take you up on your challenge, Stephanie. <laughs> um, the sandwich metaphor, uh, the bread, <laughs> is all about like the content like that is the stuff that is not going to change you know what what is that and then i look at um you know the ham uh because I'm, I'm a ham sandwich type of person that is what are the the main takeaways because at the end of the day you can have amazing content and you can present very beautifully but if you're not thinking about what are they what are they going to take away? Like, what's going to be that desired outcome? You know, um, it, it's going to fall flat. Uh, then we have the lettuce. Uh, that's like the uh, important things that you should be thinking about as as far as audio, um, like what Brian says, you know, the cameras and all of that stuff, because Stephanie knows stats better than I do. But I think the attention span is pretty quick especially online we have zoom fatigue and whatnot um and then the sauce i'm a sauce guy and the sauce is the special stuff the you know the the delight i like to surprise and delight people because at the end of the day um and i'll talk about the heartbeat this is like what when i work with people on um making stellar presentations i talk about like what's the heartbeat what's the pulse of your presentation but i like to have like the things that are going to delight people so that they immediately like, like what is that and that's where ecamm can come in 
Uh, but you don't want to have too much sauce because if you have too much sauce on your sandwich, it's going to make the bread soggy. It's going to like take away from the core of it. So you need to sprinkle the sauce in quite frequently um, because if you like say this ball, for example, this ball is like uh, your core presentation. And if you do it right, you can amplify it. What? Whoa. <laughs> I can't even. Well done. Well done. Did people do that? Did people do that? Uh, but it requires it requires thinking. A magician is always three steps yeah. ahead of the audience. And when you're doing these virtual experiences, you need to be three steps ahead. And that's why I like to say the heartbeat. Uh, so when I uh, plot out um, the experiences that I'm doing online, because I come from an improv background, and so I went from doing everything in person that was very uh, – interactive, very experiential people are like interacting with each other to virtual, I had to say, all right, how can I get that same sort of effect without people being able to touch each other? Yeah. And so I would, um, when I start to plan out my content, I, I classify <laughs> everything as, um, all right, this is a fact, all right, this is um, an engagement. And then I start to put it out and I start to look at the the heartbeat of it. And I say, all right, I have too much facts. That's going to bore the hell out of people. I need to add some stuff and then and then i look at the pulse uh of yeah. what's going on yeah and so the, and my you drop it animal was, style you're like bah! <laughs> right yeah my uh my uh sort of experience with improvisation is that and i love just like what brian said you couldn't do this real-time sort of interaction with a in-person talk but you can do it virtually so i would be asking people um, all the time. All right, cool. Throw this, throw this. And then based on what they are responding, boom, I'll throw something else in there. And like I said, you have to be two or three steps ahead, but to your audience, it's going to feel like magic It's like, what the hell? Yeah, no, it is. Uh, it is absolutely amazing. And if you, if you can plan things out and, and maybe you have a backup folder of like special magic sauce that you can throw in, it, it does make a huge difference. Um, and you know what is really funny when I, you know, I think not many of you out there realize that Snapcam is another amazingly fun app that you can bring right into Ecamm Live and then send that feed out elsewhere. Gary is demonstrating for us. But it is, it is amazing how something really simple like that can just be a really fun way to bring a presentation to life. Um, I know, Stephanie, you did a couple of presentations recently where you mixed in a whole theme based on The Greatest Showman, which I, oh, salute, yeah. I salute you, one of my all-time favorites. Yeah, no, that was, that was a great one. It was one of those things where, you know, you talk about the different magic and you're like, yeah, let's do some magic. Let's do something different. And then they're just like, they're sitting there. They're like, how did you do that? And you could do so much um, to really engage. It, it's the thing where you have to realize when you're in a, a virtual summit, everyone is probably going to do the bare bone basics because they're thinking, oh, this is a virtual summit, whatever. I don't have to do anything. But you come in and you do just that 1% different, just that extra effort. And then you've just completely changed the game. And it just makes it really, really exciting. And you know, I'm also one of those where with it's like Gary, where we're all about like, if we get some happy brain chemicals, if we get people laughing, then, you know, I'm going all about that. Let's do that. Why not? Let's, let's have some fun. Let's go for it. Let's yeah. just here. We've got magician's hats on. We've got, oh, oh, Brian's joining in on the fun. It is, it, it is amazing what you can do. You know, you, anyone that is using Ecamm Live or you're using any of these other apps to be able to partner them alongside Ecamm Live, you can do it anything that you can think of. It is pretty yeah. remarkable, all of the different tools that plug into it, all of the different features within it. Um, you know, really, it's just a matter of being able to plan that out in advance and figuring out the special ways that you can surprise and delight people. Um, and yeah. it could be I think it's one of those things where it's like, you have to pepper it in, just kind of like what, what Gary was saying. You don't want to have like too much sauce because yeah. then it'll detract away from the content itself. Um, so yeah. no, like planning it out. And I don't think most people do that with their virtual presentations is they don't think of the run of show, yeah. right? Whether it's like, what's your soundtrack for this? How are you gonna ease it in? And then you have like, you know, like the drama. 
<laughs> oh, <laughs> Stephanie, I, I like what is going on here. Brian is bringing it Stephanie, down. I got you. What the drama? Yes. The drama. Okay, well then I'm gonna pick your brains. Open question for anyone. So for someone who's brand new to live streaming and you know has spent most of their career doing keynote and PowerPoint presentations, and now they're stuck in these Zoom meetings and they want to be able to make it a little bit more engaging. They want everyone to really feel like they've just nailed it as a presenter. Maybe they're closing a, you know, a sale, they're trying to get new clients this way. How do you how do you go about thinking through a run of show? How, you know, what are what are the first steps? How do you start planning for something like that? I have like a I mean for me, every presentation, if it's 60 minutes or 20 minutes, uh, like I have a rule of five and I do it with every live video too. And I usually use a sticky note and I got sticky notes literally everywhere. You and I put it under the camera. And so I always do a rule of five. Uh, <laughs> it's three takeaways that I want the audience to remember when they when they end. I don't care about like all of the things, but if they remember three things. So that's usually my first three. The fourth one is usually a story that I believe can connect the three things to something that's con relatable. And then the fifth one is usually um, a piece of humor or something fun. Most of the time it's self-deprecating where I'll talk about my shoes or I'll let people vote uh, on which hat I'm wearing or those kind of things. But for me, that's like the five. Yeah. And I, you know, you can start there and then like, hey, what kind of, you know, broadcasting capabilities or things can I add to it, right? Like yeah. what overlays, what, you know, graphics, what gifts. Um, but for me, I start there and I start there. I mean, like, and to add to that point, like I full-time speaking is my gig and I spend four X more time on a virtual presentation, practicing, rehearsing and strategizing than I do for my full-time gig of getting on a stage 60 times around the year. And I think that's part of the idea that like, I'm, for me, I, I believe I actually provide more value virtually and you should pay me more than you do offline. <laughs> but there's also the webinar where I've sold a webinar for six years at a very low price because it's monotone over a slide deck. So we have to kind of remember like to Gary's point, Gary, I love like the idea of like too much becomes a distraction from what yeah. you have to say. Not enough creates, like I don't believe we have Zoom fatigue. I think we're just really tired of boring, really boring Zooms. Right. Like, like it's just like, the old, like why do we, when we work in the office, everyone hates meetings because there were so many meetings that happened that should have just been a phone call or an email. Yep. Well, zoom became that, right. I had one a week and a half ago and she knows I'm using this as an example. She <laughs> set up a zoom call. We got on the zoom and she's like, I just want to tell you, I got all your documentation. Everything's good. And I literally just went like, and just knocked my head to the table. And she's like, Brian, are you okay? I was like, did you literally just get me to get on a video Zoom call to give me a fun? Like I was just like, there's 70 ways you can communicate me. I'm on every social channel. There's the world. And you could have sent me that message. But yet, so I think part of this is valuing people's time, making sure that you're taking advantage of what you're presenting. But yeah, for me, I mean, literally the rule of five is the way it allows me to go on tangents. So I don't have a script. But then I, if all of a sudden I'm down, lost somewhere, I come back to those three things like, oh, yeah back to that point, right? And it kind of gives you freedom, but also a little bit of swim lanes on, on the way that you present. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a really great way to approach it. I absolutely nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. 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 I know you, I know you have a symbol for that. Where is it? Winner. <laughs> <laughs> See, I was thinking before this, I was like, oh, I should have downloaded more sound effects. And then I forgot who I was hanging out with. So it's all, it's all Oh, good. no, yeah. It's all good. Brian won. That was awesome. Uh, so, and I have a question. So when we're thinking through things like all of the, you know, cool video overlays and the sound effects and multiple cameras and things like that, I know that a lot of people how much special sauce to add or how to make, still make your presentation special, but it, you know, maybe it's just the thought of pulling in a ton of videos is just going to crash your feed, Yeah, you know, or bringing on a bunch of different guests or even sometimes even bringing in something like snap cam. Yeah. You know, how do you kind of think through an approach? What might be too much or what make, what are the things that might make sense to consider upgrading if this is a really important aspect, you know, to your business and to how you're going to grow your business? 
I think it's really helpful to think about well, what is really going to make or break your presentation, right? Like, does that, is that sound effect, is it really, really that important? Is this video really, really that important? Is it really going to add value or is it just going to be, again, a distraction? And so a lot of times when I'm mapping things out, I love that Brian had mentioned the Post-it Notes. This show is sponsored by Post-it Notes. You know, it's, it's really... What's the story going to be like? For me, it's why, what, how, and what if, and then the story loops. How am I going to open it and how am, I, how am I going to close it, right? And in between there, what is going to highlight or bold what it is exactly that I'm saying from a visual perspective? And then thinking about it from like a spec, like as, as specs go, I want to I want to avoid having to think about so many buttons to push, right? So like if I'm if I'm developing a scene, then I could connect it to a sound effect and then I could do it with a stream deck. And so all I have to worry about is just pushing that one button, right? Like I'm not having to search around the screen and like hook things from there. This is why when Brian was like, I spend so much more time putting together a virtual event, I absolutely 100% agree because you're thinking about the whole run of show, the tech side of things. And you also have to think about like who is streaming the event because they might not have the best internet upload speed that we have, you know, like I, I've been there. Where I'm like, man, why do I look choppy? And it's not my fault. <laughs> it's like, man, I got fiber. What are you talking about? But definitely plan out your show as far as like, is this going to add value? Is this really going to give that wow factor? And really just kind of like go from there. I think about, you know, when I used to go to festivals, like the EDC concerts, like there's the buildup. You know, there's the build up to it and then they drop and you're like, oh, everyone goes wild. But it's not the whole entire time where it's like, ah, you know, it's like you got to build up to it. And then you drop them in there and they're just like, everything is amazing. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I think still to uh, testing goes a, a really long way as well. You know, so if you're able to, you know, if you're bringing a guest on, if you're able to get them on a little bit early, make sure that their setup looks as good as your setup does and help talk them through any issues. Um, and just yeah, I think one of the big. One of the biggest mistakes people are making is technology for technology's sake, oh, right? So like, if you, like, you know, and, I, and that's coming from a guy with five cameras, right? Like, <laughs> like, so like for me, like, like I said, most of my presentations include two. And one of them is because I have a stage, which you can kind of see right here. So I built like a stage in my house that has like a full curtain set up where I do a more wide angle presentation. And then I have this GoPro that I'm using right now for the intimate conversation. Like I always tell, like you have to ask yourself with the technology, what is the emotional connection that you're wanting to convey and wanting to get from your audience? I think virtually the screen for a lot of us becomes the barrier and it should actually be the other way around. And that's why like, I mean, even the, the, the microphone I use, I just, I'm doing a video, hasn't gone up yet, but I have, so I have three, I literally have three microphones on my desk right now. So I have a, a, a law, I have my podcast microphone and I'm currently using uh, the blue Yeti that's on my desk. Right. So, and interestingly enough, like I was going through some strategy with some coaching and someone was like, Brian, do you realize that like you think about the emotional connection in the, in the microphone you choose? And I was like, Oh, I guess I do. Because like the law gives me freedom and allows me to, to like kind of have like that that ability to be like wherever and whenever I want. The blue Yeti on my desk allows me to be creative without restraints. And the podcast microphone makes me be very like methodical with when I'm talking, I'm doing it for a reason. And I think if we think about that and all of the things that we use virtually, like I'm not a huge fan of green screens and it's not because uh, I don't like have the technology or the thing to do it. But I think we oftentimes throw up a green screen as an excuse of technology in our presentations when it should be used as complementing the story or experience you're delivering. And if it doesn't, you shouldn't be using it. Mm. That it is so incredibly true. And I think, you know, these days, especially where most, if not all of us are in our homes, we're in our home studios. It's not like we're in, you know, fancy spaces. And we, it, I think there's an expectation that it's, it's okay to get a little bit personal. It's okay to get a little bit real with people yeah. that are working on the other end. I mean, not to say that Authent you know, authenticity is beautiful, laundry, but, but authenticity yeah. does go a long way. You know, it's okay to show people a little piece of yourself and have that kind of personalized background. Um, like I'm seeing in Stephanie's in the back of your space, she's got her brand new book that she just published. So really exciting. She's got that as part of her personalization. We got Brian's press the damn button. We got some Star Wars going on in the 
<laughs> for Mr. K. Oh, hey! It's uh, it, but it's yeah, it's totally it's totally fine to um to run that risk, and I do think that green screen gives a there's a lot of cool things that you can do with it, particularly if you're doing yeah. a presentation where you want to run your slides behind you, absolutely, and you want to make yourself you know pick. But uh, but yeah, you know, having the movement, considering whether you're standing or sitting, all of those are things that you should be thinking through when you're deciding how you want your video to look when you're presenting. And I know a lot of a lot of presenters prefer to stand. They prefer to have the the ability to move around and flow through it and and have that level of energy. And it, I'm sure yeah. it carries through to the other side. I want to give a um, like Gary showed me this thing where sometimes he'll have like an inside joke and then he flips it to the other camera he's like yeah i just said that but it was like it was, it was hilarious because it's like it breaks like this fourth wall where he's like yeah i'm totally talking some mess right now and you know you're here for it you know and and i love it but the thing is too is that it's you don't you don't always need all the cameras it's knowing how to work your camera yeah. right where it's like That's what she says. i i have something to tell you you know like experiment with that it's not even when you're talking on stage you don't typically stand in one spot you know like you're moving around because movement gets people to to tune in and so don't be afraid of your camera do things with it the fact that gary just threw some magic in there i'm like <laughs> right oh you guys we have a ton of magicians that are now on the ecam platform and every time i get are. one of them to do a live with me i'm like bring me the magic i want to see the light. there is a sense of you know excitement and wonder in not knowing what someone's gonna be able to do next so when they're they're willing to take those steps and um and play around with you on on screen it can just be really electric and really fun um so i want to talk a little bit about the kind of the the tech side i mean obviously we're you know we're here on behalf of ecamm we're talking through some of the fun ways that you can use our app to be able to take a video feed and send it out. I think a lot of people have confusion or frustration over what the virtual camera actually does and how you can take a, a feed and send it through to an app like Zoom. I know everyone in the world right now is using Zoom. It's kind of the, you know, the number one video conferencing tool. And so you can take a, an Ecamm live feed, for example, exactly what we're sharing right now. You could send it through into Zoom, but there are certainly limitations in being able to do that and um, things that are going to work and not work. So um, and I know a big one is that Zoom does reduce the quality on the other side. So even if you have like really top notch, amazing, you know, video quality, you've set it all up in Ecamm and it's looking absolutely fantastic. Those are things that you need to be able to think through and um, ahead of time. So uh, any of you that are using Zoom here in this group, how do you how do you kind of think through or plan for or control? Does it change your presentations at all as you're thinking through like, okay, it's looking all like this in Ecamm and it's looking absolutely fantastic. Um, and how do I t take that and make sure that it's gonna look the same in whatever format that is, whether it's going through Zoom or into a webinar or into a different, into a different app? One thing that I do, um, and again, this comes from my experience in performance. And what are the misconceptions about like, oh, you're an improviser, so you just wing everything? I was like, no. We do a lot of per, uh, rehearsals and and it just gets things in our body so that when we are on stage, we can connect and we can be right there and we can give that experience like, oh, wow, we're having a like conversation. And if anything goes wrong, we can control our breathing and our presence so no one will know the difference. But one of the things that I was doing because I was using Ecamm or I still am using Ecamm as my virtual camera into Zoom. I was doing so many tests just to make sure that I understand how it's going to look in Zoom. And then when I throw on, like, for example, like throw on some slides, um, I will know like, oh, how do I show up? So I can like, oh, cool. All right, I look good. Um, and then the other thing <laughs> is understanding where things show up. So I can be like, hey, yeah. it's over here uh, yes. versus over here. You know, and that is a big one for me. And especially better. this is something that I learned from Stephanie of, you know, making sure that you can uh, do things, especially if you're trying to make an effect and you're trying, like, for example, we read left to right. So making sure that I am doing things the right way so that as you're following along, um, it makes sense. So it takes a lot of practice. And I know like in Zoom, it's not, 
perfect. But one of the things I love, love, love about Ecamm is that the fact that I can adjust all of my settings and then I go into Zoom and people are like, <laughs> like talk about like just, just the lighting. And you don't even have to have like a high tech camera to do that. Like right now, this is one of the things I can't believe happened. I actually had to send my Canon uh, for servicing because I was, I think, using it too much. <laughs> and so right now I'm using my Logitech. Uh, that was my camera that Stephanie said, like, Gary would do the intimate thing because my Logitech was like off to the side and I would hit a button on my stream deck and I'm like, hey, hey. But when I put my Logitech up, I was able to like fine tune it so that it looks better than it would have looked yeah. in Zoom had I just chosen that camera. Yeah, you do get a lot of the different um, camera settings, you have the temperature and brightness and a lot of, of things that you can do if you have uh, the pro level account and are a master of LUTs like Marshall Fox out there. You oh my gosh, that, yeah, that, is, that is money. You can do this is LUT, to This do. is LUT focused. Uh, and I'm using, this is a GoPro Hero 8 that I'm using for, for this one here. So I have, I have two Logitechs, um, two GoPros, um, as, and, a, and a Sony you know, RX uh, Mach, you know, 100 Mach 5. And I think it's interesting too. Like I like what you know, Gary brought up there because I think the thing that I like, the reason, I mean, I've used Ecamm for almost every presentation because it's agnostic to whatever tool. I mean, I mean I've presented of all of the 51 presentations, less than half have been on Zoom. So I've done WebEx, hop in, uh, appear in, I've done closed ones, I've done open ones. Uh, and But the big piece for me is when I'm working with a client, I have to know the platform, I have to know the technology before I build the presentation. Because if the presentation is gonna let me use Ecamm but doesn't have polls, then I'm gonna have to put my surveys on my Ecamm overlays, right? Like, And so I think that's kind of the beauty is that Ecamm gives me the freedom to be prepared to, to do the way that I like to prepare, uh, to present. Yeah. But you have to know the platform, you have to know, like uh, I'm using, uh, uh, not teachable, a uh, pathable um, for an event uh, next week. And I was on it today with the client. And I was like, I want to know if Prezi directly in to it is having the delay. Because interestingly enough, Prezi into Ecamm into an app, no delay. Yeah. Prezi directly into the app. Sometimes I get a delay. Still yeah. haven't figured it out. It's, it's, a, I think it's on my side of the house. Um, but like those little things, right? And I think the other piece is like being prepared. Like I love all this tech, but like, Right now, I'm like, I prefer USB microphone, <laughs> one camera shot and a ring light because yeah. think about troubleshooting. Like we're a production team of one. Like I have a soundboard and an extra microphone, but if my microphone stops working, I have to troubleshoot the microphone, the cable, the soundboard, a soundboard into the USB hub. You, no way, right? Like I have my, my AirPods like underneath my, um, my Blue Yeti because yeah. I'm like, yeah. if the Blue Yeti stops working, AirPods go in and I go and like, I even had the power go out three, three weeks ago, right? And like three weeks ago, mm -hmm. power went out. Oh, I switched. I switched to my iPhone. Had a. I have a um, from iographer. I have a ring light that plugs into a USB power supply, and I put that up. I had my camera put. You know, use what I needed to. And I went. You know, finished my virtual presentation. It was there was ten thousand dollars in the line. My power went out at six p.m. with no rain, no thunder, no anything. Yeah. And within minutes, I went from this full setup to a count, you know, a desktop ring light plugged into a USB power supply, an iPhone, and I delivered, you know, as high quality of presentation as and you'll, you'll see. And I think that's part of this idea, getting the right technology and environment that allows you to be successful. And for me, the beauty of Ecamm being a desktop app that uses virtual makes that all, it's all the difference in the world compared. And, I have Wirecast OBS installed as well, right? So like I have the other tools. To me, that's the other reason with Ecamm, Wirecast, I mean, anyone who's used Wirecast or OBS, you start troubleshooting, you start using multiple scenes and you're down a rabbit hole that is like, like it's like the difference, like I don't want to use Final Cut if I'm editing a video for Twitter because if I use on Final Cut, it's 45 minutes or an hour for a two minute video, right? Like I use Camtasia yeah. and it gets me done. And like for me, I mean, I haven't opened... I mean, it's a shot at Wirecast, but it's the truth. I haven't opened Wirecast in six months. And and the reason is, is because for me, I'm going to use the technology that's simplest to troubleshoot that allows me to be innovative and deliver my content. Yeah. And that's where, you know, even like, you know, I, I do my podcast using Restream Studio and I use Ecamm's virtual cam on the backside because yeah. I switch cameras and like being able to play on all these platforms. I mean, you should see how happy my event producers are. 
because they're like, Brian, we need to, I know you have a lot of tech, but we're using a platform you've never used before. And I was like, like, does it let me do live video? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, we're good. They're like, what do you mean? I'm like, yeah, I got, I have eCam. It's going to overlay on my camera. I'll control everything on my side. They're like, you're going to make my life easier. I'm like, yep. And that's you know, like kind of the magic. Yeah. yeah. That's the best part though, right? Because I, I feel like those companies that are just now trying to step into the virtual event space, they probably might not have had the time to even learn that platform. And then yep. you're trusting them to produce your show. That's the part where I get a little, you know, type A where I'm like, no, 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 no. Let, let me <laughs> produce the show that I want it to work. Right. And so I can do my own sound effects. I can do my own intros or heaven forbid, you know, my daughter comes in and says that she needs to use the bathroom. I could put up my own technical difficulty sign. Right. Versus someone just like leaving me on there. I'm like, can you, can you please? <laughs> I love you guys are having so much fun. That's going on down here. I love it. All right. Yeah. Well, I want to be sensitive of time and I know we have a bunch of questions, so I'm going to I'm going to go for it over to Brian, who's playing around. And when I look through questions, <laughs> I am. I'm playing around. We got, we got the HP nine uh, webcam 900 or the, not HP Logitech. Now K900. those cables. I'm like I anxiety attack right now. Look at that. Look at that. That's wild. Right. And then this is my GoPro hero eight. And then this is a Logitech Brio. Uh, and of course this is the horrible laptop. What you see at every zoom, which is really just up someone's nose. <laughs> right. It's up your and nose. <laughs> Oh and they're usually gosh. attached with headphones, but they're like this the whole time, right? So, uh, yeah, that's that's where we're at here. You guys, the fun of eCam is that when you bring experts on, then they take over the screen and you are no longer in right. control. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, yeah. I want to say uh, hi to Katie. She's watching from the UK. Okay. Gary is somehow magically on in the comments because that's what we roll. We have Sue here. We have Yorn Bjorn. I'm going to mispronounce your name. I'm sorry. Brian also has the magic. He's in there. Juan, who is at literally every single one of our live streams. Juan, we need to send you some more fun EPM swag. So we'll follow up after. We have India on. Um, India says, Stephanie has an app to send the EPM signal to Instagram. Um, yeah, we can post a link over. Stephanie's got a great uh, video. I think that you were talking specifically about Lula. Um, got a good video that yeah. says we can use Ecamm to Lula to Instagram or just Lula directly to Instagram as well. Yeah. Yep. That's yeah. a fun one. People are having fun on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much you can do. I feel like when you bring us on, we will break things. Oh, for yes. sure. I like the question. You guys see that there's a question about um, Zoom and speaker view. And uh, I have a little bit of a soapbox on if I have to give the number one advice, if you're giving a virtual presentation, is that the education of the audience's expectations is the most important. Yeah. There's nothing more important. It's the same with live streaming. Like, I love live streaming because it is a participatory conversation, right? I'm in the chat. I, have the, I, I can't do a live stream if I don't see the chat. Like, it gives me the, the shakes. Like, I, I'm just a whole, like, I don't like talking to nobody. And if I have a chat, I feel as though it's, you know, back and forth. Like uh, some of my closest friends, we, our connection started via one of us being on camera and the other one in the chat, right? Like that's how our, that's all, actually all four of us, that's how we all four connected, right? It was like us joining each other's live video and being, you know, participatory. <laughs> and the thing that I, like stresses me out is I can have five cameras, a Prezi overlay into Ecamm with amazing sound effects. And if someone is showing up with the expectation that it's another webinar, they're going to put me on tab 149. They're going to be barely paying attention and they're not going to see anything that I'm doing. Right. And like, I mean, I make it a point that with every event, everything I'm doing, I tell the event organizer, you need to let them know I'm going to ask them questions. I would like to be them to be on their desktop because when I give them a link to an app like Slideo, which allows me to ask, uh, answer questions and do some really unique poll polling. I need them to be on a browser because it's easier to accomplish on a browser. Right. And like that education of, cause a virtual event is just a YouTube video. If you're talking one way and not interacting, like, but it's, and there's YouTube and Netflix. Like I don't want to compete with either one of them. Like personally, <laughs> no. but for me, yeah. So for me, it's like, I'm going to tell you, show up, I'm gonna ask questions. You're gonna help direct the conversation. I don't do Q and A at the end. I do Q and A throughout. Bring on your questions. Right? Like make those expectations known. The other thing that I love to do is I'll be like, "Hey guys, I'm gonna do about 15 minutes of content. Then I'm gonna get to questions." For those that are in the chat, if you see anybody come in just answering questions, go ahead and let them know. I'll answer them at the end. 
it empowers your audience. Your audience is like, oh, he trusts me to help. Like <laughs> we all become moderate. Like it's amazing how those little things can make all the differences. I've seen churches that are doing some great live streaming. I mean, some of the best live streaming I think right now are happening um, in the church space. And, and just that simple thing of letting the audience know, like, we want to hear from you. We are going to pay attention because the other part of this is it's acknowledgement, right? You don't have to read every question, but acknowledging that you are addressing and looking at them like you did, Katie, yes. that's it's everything that's different because nothing more frustrating than a, an amazing virtual presentation. And we had no idea. And I was expecting like, slides. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, um, hello, hello, I'm over here. Yeah. Miserable. Well, we hear more Can about I, Brian. Uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Right. I wanted to add one thing about if you're using Ecamm Virtual Cam into Zoom. Yes. And and, and really Brian difference. Brian hit on this point is that you have to know what the producer is doing because they're the host of the Zoom meeting. And we all know and love him. His name is Mike Alton. And he does amazing presentations and he did his virtual camera, but you know what happened? The host didn't share the screen. They just kept him as the postage stamp the yeah, entire time. Uh, didn't spotlight him at all. And he's yep. like, are you kidding me? I, I did all this cool stuff. And so remember that if you're doing Ecamp Virtual Cam into Zoom, if you're just going to do your video, right, make sure that it's the spotlight video. Or you can also do the option where you're share screening the Ecamp output window. Yep. And if yep. you do that second option, which I like to do, I then turn off my camera so you don't see the double, you know, like the posted stamp and then the big one. But that's like my big gripe. It's like, if I'm going to do this, you better make sure I look good. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and there's also, you know, there's questions about the idea of like, how do I share my slides? Right. And I don't like answering that question because here's the thing. Like, look, I have a slide up on my screen and it's picture in picture. And if you're on Zoom or on your iPhone, you can't read the words in white because yeah. I just took a slide yeah. and I just threw it on little. And so rather than doing that, I want all of those words on the screen without the useless background behind it, right? Like that's the difference between going from one to the other, right? Or if I'm going to go on my screen, I'm going to make sure that, okay, hey, I'm going to do this. And like, I'm sticky note heavy, right? Like I will make sure <laughs> that I will move around to be a part of that presentation. And with some of my Prezi ones, like I, I, sh I have a video on this, but I mean, I had 14 standing spots in one presentation for one Prezi present because I wanted to move, but it's because you have to be larger. And so like the Drift Conference, which is a big uh, conference, 81% of the audience watching on their Zoom was on their mobile device. Yeah. And I was it's like, really important to think about so then you have to think if they're all on mobile, now everything's even smaller, right? Like, so like even the, the, the coolest, like any, we all have stuff in our background on our phone. You're like, like, you know, how does that work? Right. So I think we have, that's a big piece on when you're talking about taking a presentation and I just want to put it in like a picture in picture, what you're really saying is I don't want to do the extra work of making a broadcast. I just want to repurpose what I've already done. Yeah. It's the truth. That's a really, really good point as you think through like what, what are the most important words that are actually in that presentation? Because you're not going to be able to fit all, people are not going to be reading all of them anyway, even if it's a big screen and they're able to see everything. So when, once you shrink that down to a smaller screen, for sure you're going to lose a ton of, uh, a ton of people. So Brian, you said that you do have tutorials on Prezi. Dr. Cindy. I do. Yep, up on, on my YouTube. So YouTube, uh, it's Brian Fanzo VX. Um, and I actually, I did it on Ecamm, using Ecamm, <laughs> minutes after I did, <laughs> minutes after I did my um, a, a, a virtual event hackathon, and I created the Prezi in 30 minutes because we were all timed. Um, and so I did a 10 minute presentation that I created in 30 minutes using Prezi and Ecamm. And then I did my video on there. So I think it's uh, how to create an interactive presentation in 30 minutes, I think is the, is the title. But uh, yeah, it's on my YouTube. Great. We'll, we will grab the link and share it here in the comments afterwards. Um, Environmental Coffee House wanted to know that these kinds of graphics can come right into Ecamm using scenes. Yeah. So they all come in as overlays. Um, yeah. yeah. That, which is what I was doing. Those slides were, those slides were using Ecamm, not any yeah. other Yeah. So, so there, there are a couple different ways. So they come in as, um, as overlays and that could be text overlays, um, video overlays, graphic overlays. <laughs> now we're going to play around a bit. But when we're talking about things like Snapcam um, and Prezi, I believe, Brian can correct me if I'm wrong, that's coming in through a virtual camera, right? It is. 
Yeah, so it's a little bit different. It's not the overlays menu, but you can still you can still tie all of that into scenes to create your run of show in advance. So Correct. the good thing about um, the the great thing about all of this is that scenes are the foundational way that you plan out your content, and then yes. overlays and all of the other different features and things that you bring in can be assigned to a scene, or you can on the fly like these guys just been dropping things in and adding things and removing them. <laughs> Let's uh, let's close up actually because this is a great um, tool. Stephanie, do you want to give us a, a couple of minutes on the video script maker because I think that's really helpful. Oh, oh, thanks! Yeah, wow. No, <laughs> well, I mean, the, the, the main reason why I brought it up is because I just wanted to show you how you can make your Zoom presentation look different. Instead of being that little small postage stamp, you can make yourself this much bigger, and then you know, point to wherever it is that you want. Know where it is that you're pointing, right? <laughs> That's like the money. But the Video Script Maker is basically, it's a collection of hard-hitting headlines, intros, all of that stuff. For those of us that are going on shows, going on podcasts, interviews, all of that stuff, you push a button and it will auto-generate what your run of show should be. How should you open it? What's your hook, your headlines, your teasers, all of that stuff. And you get like over 500,000 different permutations of it. It's, it's pretty sick. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I've been using it, it on myself and uh, it's really, really fun to play around with and really easy. Same. It makes everything all, um, it just makes it really obvious. So, you know, it flows it through and helps you get, get into the mindset of having a run of show, which I think is, is a huge barrier when people are just getting into live streaming or video creation of any kind. So that's great. Sue wants to know, Stephanie, what mic you're using. Um, it's great. <laughs> right. Oh, I use uh, a Blue Yeti just like Brian, Brian, you have a Blue Yeti too, right? Yeah. Yep. Um, I love it. It is the best because you don't need you don't need ear headphones because it blocks out everything from behind. So I have no headphones on, which is like a lifesaver for me. <laughs> I love it. Doc, uh, Doc is in the house. Doc is usually in the house. We love him. Thanks so much for checking it out. Ho hope the podcast went well. I'm gonna have to tune in. I'm behind on my podcasting. Um. Uh, Joy is in the house. Welcome. Joy is a grandma, but wants to do things for, like this for the kids. Yeah, it's. Um, we've been talking a lot lately with uh, teachers and educators of all backgrounds. You know, trying to help them think through ways to um, to use eCam and to use scenes. You know, here we've been talking about a run of show, but if you're a teacher, it, that's your lesson plan, right? Like scene one is you know is your intro. Yep. Slide. Scene two is like a fun, you know, animated graphic that you're pulling in. Maybe it's a clock because you're teaching time. There is a lot that you can do that makes it, <laughs> Gary is on fire today. I love it. I know, yeah, he's like, I've got a countdown timer. I've got a buzzer. Yeah, he, it's yeah. all of the different things that you would normally have, like in an improv, you know, breakthrough workshop. Yeah. You could have those elements in Ecamm. I, you know, I see my daughter sitting in her little kindergarten orientation classes. I'm like, you know what we could do right now? If you had a snap camera, that would be amazing. <laughs> yeah, that is, I'm, giving, I'm giving my uh, press the damn button talk uh, in two weeks to the American Retirement Association. Wow. And it, the prep call I had with them yesterday was amazing. The, the amount of things that they're doing on Zoom already uh, is like mind blowing. I was like, I want to show you Ecamm and Prezi. Wait till you see what, like they, I mean, they were doing things like they were doing cooking tricks. The one lady had taken her her camera and hooked it up to like her husband's like uh, his like bag that he used to have for his IV and had it over top of <laughs> her camera. I was like, I was like, look at so like I mean innovation in live stream. Like it's the coolest thing with everybody being forced in the virtual, right? Like we've been all preaching how important it is, uh, and like we thought over the next seven years we'd get here, uh, and we got fast forwarded seven weeks and seven years uh, for all intent potential purposes, but. Watching people kind of get creative with you know everything from camera angles to ways you can do it, like it's so so cool to see. Yeah, it, yeah. it is absolutely amazing. Um, Doc says, which I think is really true, that people are making more Zoom calls because they just miss being around people. I think you know having that video element and having it feel like somebody is actually in the room with you and is engaging with you goes a really long way. Super important to remember, especially uh, as we continue. I want to throw out one Doc thing that. Yeah, from an entertainment standpoint that most people forget. And this is something that if anyone, um, so I study, yes, I do improv, but I also study uh, comedians and how comedians perform their, mm -hmm. their beats and stuff like that. But one thing that we can all learn from Jimmy Fallon is when you, because you work so hard to put all this material together and maybe you have a joke 
And <laughs> because you don't have people that are responding, you have to cue them that this is the point to laugh. And if you look at Jimmy Fallon, he is crushing it right now with uh, doing his show virtually because he laughs at all of his jokes and it makes it that much more funnier for us. And so my my tip to all of you is if you make a joke, if you do something that is funny, like laugh at it because it gives oh. the permission for yeah. the people watching. They're like, oh, that was funny. <laughs> that was that was cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Done. <laughs> it makes me feel like you're not alone as well like it it was right? painful to watch all of the like late night and you know all of those hosts who are used to being in front of an audience and feeding off the energy of an audience it's it's hard when you're by yourself it's hard when you're the you know you're the only you know you're the producer and the host and you're trying to get out there and get your content out there without having an immediate response, but live streaming does give you that response. Embrace the power of the delay too. You have to remember some some platforms, I mean, I had 27 seconds on an event platform uh, on delay with the chat. Um, so like when you're like, you make a great joke and then you move on and then people are laughing 27 seconds later, that definitely um, is one you wanna, you know, it's like a lot of times I'll tee things up, be like, okay, this is the question I'm gonna ask. And I asked the question before I normally would, then do a little conversation because I know that that delay is going to be in there. So <laughs> definitely have to factor in as well. Yeah, absolutely. There are so many questions coming in. Thank you so much for sending in all the questions and comments and playing through them here. Um, Bring them in. Yeah. There. <laughs> oh, this is great to hear. The green screen some years back required so much good lighting, but Ecamm has been the easiest green screen with minimal lights. Yeah, absolutely. Right. There's a lot of virtual green screen options out there. Zoom's actually a good example of this, but they aren't quite as good. If you play around, if you play around, it does make a big difference having a physical green screen behind you. I know that that's hard for people to wrap their heads around sometimes. They're like, wait, I have to go and actually buy a green screen or a green blanket or a green sheet to go behind me. It does make a really big difference in the quality. And if you're if you're thinking about how you're gonna incorporate green screen or backgrounds into your feed without it looking campy and cheesy and ridiculous, having that quality really goes a long way and thinking about the lighting goes a really long way as well. Um, doc, doc heard Emma, <laughs> Stephanie's daughter. I love it. She's more famous than you, Stephanie. She is. No, yeah, she's, she's definitely, she likes to make her cameos. That's for sure. But I, it's, you, we all know we're parents. It's like, just give them, give them that 15 seconds and then they'll leave you alone. Either that or just have a stash of candy in the corner. Oh, like, yeah. there. Or both, or both. <laughs> My eight-year-old was lividly angry at me yesterday. I was doing two buddy trainings. I was on YouTube and I was looking through all the videos and he was like, how come I'm not allowed screen time, but you're on YouTube? <laughs> I was like, well, I'm on, I'm on YouTube for work. So it's kind of different. But yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been interesting balancing. <laughs> Uh, India says she likes the idea of having a technical difficulties, please stand by scene. I just noticed that the other day. It was something I never really thought about, but hugely important to have. Make your own. Make, make your own. Make your own. like, sorry, I have to check to make sure that my daughter is fed, you know, like, <laughs> or say that the hamster needs to be fed. Like, whatever it is, make your own technical difficulties screen. Because again, you might have a producer who's not paying attention and, you know, something happens and you're like, come take me off the screen. There was one where my daughter like kicked open the door and I was like, okay, you guys really, you could have just taken me off the screen. <laughs> I'm sorry in advance for all the times that I'm sure I've done that. I will do that yeah. as I work my way up to being producer level quality. Uh, and and says, thanks for the great ideas for teachers to try. Yeah, it's amazing. You know, we, even as we were thinking through marketing towards teachers to try to figure out how we can help and show what Ecamm can do. It, you know, just even thinking about it from a different perspective, you know, we talk about it from the angle of scenes and run of show, but for you guys, it's a lesson plan and you can mix in, you know, uh, recorded video content as well as live content. So you can, you can do both. You can create smaller video clips using yeah. Ecamm. You can drop those in and, you know, have them as part of your longer live show. You can really do everything. If you can plan it out, you don't have to worry about video editing later. You don't have to try to record yeah. something, go back and then figure out what you need to add in and then parents are emailing you and you've got to get it sent out, do it one time, figure out if it, you're going to send it out or put it live and then grab that video clip and then send that, send that through to students who were you know, unable to you know, make the actual original event. Um, That's an important fact too with Ecamm. Like I use, I mean, every video, I, every single video I make 
is using Ecamm as the, my platform because the record feature, right? Like, so like, the, like why, how are you good switching scenes and bringing things on? You haven't done that many lives lately. Like it's because I've created 80 videos using Ecamm as well, right? There's a lot of other tools where you have to open up another, like a third party. And like, by the time you get there, that's, that's a lot of the process as well. And so I think that's kind of the beauty here is that when you set up run of show, you set up a production um, inside of Ecamm, but the post-production editing is, is minimal to none, which is beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it makes it, you know, there's there's no editing within Ecamm Live. It's just not something we have built into the tool. But a big reason for that is that, by and large, you don't really need it. You can, you know, you could do a little trim on one side or the other video using QuickTime or even natively within Facebook or YouTube or wherever you're going out to. If you do, if you spend that added time to plan everything out in advance and really leverage scenes or a stream deck or be able to flow through it, you're not really going to need to do all that much editing. It's about thinking through how how you want to use the content down the road. Is it just for the one live? Are you repurposing it? Is it just going out into, you know, into you know, a webinar event where then you automatically have that file later that you can, you know, send along to anyone else that may have missed it. Just want to be able to think, spend the time to think it through. Like Brian says, you know, four, four times the amount of time in planning than actually doing it. <laughs> yeah. Stand by. <laughs> Stand by. Yeah, that's a good one. Oh, there we go, guys. Please stand by. I love it. Um, I love it. All right, I'm going through. I think we're nearing the end of our questions, guys. Awesome questions. Lots of great feedback. Brian is, as usual, in there answering everything for us. So we will we will certainly be leaving this up as a replay on our YouTube channel. We'll be pointing back towards it, and we're usually pretty responsive in answering questions. So if anything comes through, you're watching on the replay. Don't hesitate to leave questions in. We'll be sure to share um, video links and examples to these guys' presentations. They are amazing. Um, they really spend the time to make them interesting and fun. And even when you're madly taking a ton of notes, you just can't look away. So thank you. And so shout out to the Facebook group. Yeah. That Facebook right. group is freaking amazing. Like, oh, yeah. I, I am not a Facebook group fan of live streamers because they usually just annoy me in self-promotion of, you know, and we've been in plenty of those. And that Facebook group you guys have created, holy cow. I mean, the amount of times where, I mean, like I save so many, I hate saving videos on Facebook because I don't ever, like I can't even find where my save videos go half the time. Yeah. Um, but I had to figure out where they go because of that group. Because I'm like, yeah. wait a second, he did that in Keynote? Like, what did he do that? <laughs> oh, like, yeah. Did he, how did you, like, I, was, I mean, I Bradley had me, Bradley had me at one point where my saved videos were like 13 of his. So uh, yeah. for those that are like, I mean, I, I know there's a lot of haters on Facebook. There's three groups right now that like Facebook groups are what make me happy. And and this Ecamm Live one is one of them. So like shout out to that, the team and Adrian's tutorials. There's a lot of, right. live, a lot of live streaming tutorials. Not a lot of them have someone's voice that's soothing, which shout out to him and his accent. And like, I can listen to that. But I mean, I've, re I've recommended that to people where they're comparing between tools. And I'm like, don't even look at the tool. Just go look at the <laughs> tutorials that Ecamm's putting out. It's going to make all of this, like, the scene, if you're overwhelmed by scenes, virtual camera, sending any of that stuff, yeah. there's tutorials. I mean, kudos to Ecamm. Like, they're not paying me anything to say that. This is me. Like, <laughs> and, like, I, I, I stay on my own channel on my own stuff as well because, like, there's, when I mean, we've been in live streaming for a while now. Like, for me, it's six years. And watching tools emerge has been fun. But watching tools emerge and kind of come and go and not really like move the industry forward is a very frustrating, yeah. you know, for the last, yeah. I'd say for most of the years, but I'd say for the last 12 months watching the industry move forward. And it's thanks to, you know, tutorials, that Facebook group, you know, I mean, I'm just taking some of those notes, you know, some of this, what are the people are doing on Twitch and some of those other places, some really cool things. I mean, innovations happening everywhere if you're willing to watch and kudos to Ecamm on, on both of those. Yeah, absolutely. We are, um, we are just blown away by our Facebook community. I will be sure to drop the link yeah. in. Everyone is welcome to join. I think we're up just over 10,000 active yeah, members. Yeah, you guys hit 10,000. when 10, I say 000, right? active, I mean like literally all of them are active there. Yeah. They are sharing examples and tips and tricks. If someone asks a question, it is like seconds before there's 35 different answers and examples. It's just a really collaborative space, which I, I'm just... I mean, I sit back and just am sort of marveled by uh, people's ability to support each other, especially in a time where, you know, there are a lot of businesses that need to be going live quickly and professionally in order to save their business. So it's it's really important. And I think uh, it's become a really great, fun space. And yeah, Adrian is fantastic. I mean, you guys, we've 
when I walked into uh, the, into this job and was taking over marketing for, from uh, from a really small team that never had done marketing before, and they were like, "We've never done any marketing," and I was like, "You guys have." the best customers because they are out there marketing for you. My job is so easy. It's walking in and being able to work with people like all of you guys and all of you guys watching that are out there creating videos. Not only are you doing your own videos, but you guys are also creating videos about how much you love Ecamm and that makes my job so much easier and so much more fun. So I really appreciate well, yeah. it. Doc, Doc Rock said, Doc Rock said, wait till you see my Apple <laughs> script. Doc Rock is going to be out there. Yeah, he is. I know. And some of the times I'm like, I don't even want to watch or like look at the group because I'm like, it's going to, I'm going to go, I'm going to spend my entire weekend now trying to do some <laughs> random thing that is so like, I mean, right? I, kudos to, you know, yeah. and, and most Facebook groups have a lot of times you're like, I wish you would have Googled that, right? Like, I mean, like that's like the average Facebook group. It's like, if you knew Google existed, try that first. But this group, I mean, there's tutorial, a lot of those things that are, that are going on and, you know, like watching the tool evolve. I think Stephanie mentioned that before, right? Like, I mean, Katie, you've done an amazing job of fostering a community and seeing where these things are going. I also love collaboration with other tools, right? Like the fact, you know, what the things you guys do with like Restream and, and Zoom and, you know, even when the virtual cam, when we have like, you know, when the virtual cam and Zoom decided to play games with us for a while, right? Like we, and the amount of hacks that were created, we had like 37 <laughs> different ways to go live in Zoom. And I can tell you, like I'm getting, that's my full-time revenue is speaking in a lot of these events yeah. and it's saved me more times than I can count where, you know, people are you know, asked, giving out help in there. So it, it's, it's a, it's a fun community. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. If you are not in it, you need to join it. You will. <laughs> it's my entire Facebook feed now is just like amazing yeah. content coming out of that Facebook. I know. I don't even go on the feed. I just go <laughs> into the groups tab and I'm like, okay, Ecamm, what do you there got, is. doc? <laughs> what are you doing now with these scripts? What's Bradley got? And I'm, you know, it's, it's been, it's cool. Yeah. And I, I will say, I know I'm sure there's people watching out there who have never heard of us and they jumped into this conversation. If so awesome and amazing. And thank you. Uh, we do have a free trial. You, you, before you even try the trial, before you even hit that download button, like Brian said, jump into the community and see what other people are creating. Check out some of our tutorial videos. I know a trial can feel like, oh no, I only have 14 days and then it's going to time out and I'm going to be, you know, stuck having to make a quick decision. Uh, our trial is no, we don't take your credit card. There's no risk. There's no obligation. And it is a space where even if you are on the trial or even if before you even downloaded the trial, you can still jump in, ask questions, um, take a look at what the tool can do. We're always happy to help. So um, on that note, we are past an hour because you guys are way too much fun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for taking <laughs> Friday, we've done it. Uh, really, really appreciate everyone being here. Really appreciate the three of you taking time out of your busy schedules to talk through different ways um, that you're using the tool. Thank you for using the tool. Thank you so much for live streaming, being a great example. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone watching, we will see you in our many, many shows and in the community. We've got lots going on. So we send an email out on Mondays to everyone on our email list and then here on YouTube. You can see our show schedule up in our um, oh, channel sorry. banner. Press that damn button, guys. You can do it. We <laughs> believe in you. Live streaming is not as scary as it seems. It just takes a lot of planning through, but you have something to say and something to share. So give it a try. Press the button. Bye, guys. We'll see you next time.